Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Centre for Legal Innovation's Reinvent Legal Business series. We are incredibly fortunate today to have Ian Mountford join us. Ian is the founder of Fit for Social, which is a social media marketing agency, and um, he's going to give you lots of fantastic tips for this. So do um, hold on to your seats. I know it's going to be incredible. Thanks, Terry. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, just a quick, if you've got your hands up in the system and you know how to use the hands up thing that's in the bottom there, if you can hear me okay, just hit that hands up because I just want to make sure, here we go. Yeah, that's good. Lots of people, hands up. So I, so everybody can hear me, which is very important. Um, so welcome to this session on social media do's and don'ts. The big goal for me today is to get you to a point where you'll know what to do to make the most of social media, no matter what skill level you are at. As you'll find as we go through this session, there's a whole lot of opportunities in there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of useful practical things to, that you can take away. So the aim today is to get you to a point where whatever your skill level or whatever your sort of um, expertise right now, you can step things up, even if it's just one big takeaway that you'll that you'll be able to have from this session. The wins that I want you to know more on today: um, profile setup is exceptionally important right now. Attention levels for graphs are all going north in terms of the number of people that are accessing social media profiles and looking at what people have got on offer, because obviously they can't do any more face-to-face -face shopping engagement and why it matters so much especially for professional services firms it's a huge area and one that i'll keep harping on about through the, throughout this one facebook is a dirty word to many in professional services and i'm going to try and show you why it would make sense for you to consider it as part of your marketing playbook and your frameworks consistency of posting and showing up online is a, another big one again i shall probably cause people to get um, sweats when I show you and uh, you can see for yourself in terms of the effort that gets put in to get results and make it happen. But I want to be realistic with you today. I'd rather be that way than sort of kind of um, give you smoke and mirrors and nothing to take away. What kind of content to create to get results? I'll, I'll give you some examples of things that can work really well for you and how to create that content with, with, with what kind of mindset, which is very important. I'll explain why it can take time, why things won't happen in a, a kind of click of the fingers, the, the golden age of turning on social media profiles and then suddenly having good things happen and making lots of sales is sadly behind us. Um, exceptional cases do exist where celebrities jump on and do something but there are lots and lots of people who are getting fed up within a couple of weeks and finding that this is a, a struggle for them and then just ditch profiles. So this is something to be very cautious and careful about. And how much a difference education can make in this process. I think that's a, that's a really good place to, to get yourself into a frame of mind where you know that a tiny bit of education can give you a massive lift and, it, and it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a, a full qualification. It can be a short, sharp injection of some skills that can give you a boost in one particular area, because that's what we're all about right now. We're all about small increments and making some small commitments that then over time lead to much bigger commitments. So I'll give you a little bit about me first. Um, I started Fit for Social as an agency in 2016. Uh, came here with my lovely wife, Catherine, in uh, from the UK. Uh, we, I started on Twitter in 2009. I was working in the US at the time. I took about a year of just stalking how it was done before I actually posted anything. And I think that's a, that's a common place that we all tend to be in, that fear of actually showing up, first of all, and doing something. It took me ages, just fear of what my employer would think, fear of what my mates would think, would I look stupid? All of this stuff, I had to get over it, but it took me about a year to do that. I finally got myself a video camera, bought, built a, a very small and simple WordPress platform and just went for it. 
So I used to run a great deal. I uh, hadn't run for a long time. And in the US, I used to go down to New York from Boston every six weeks or so. I had a friend down there, a good friend that I'd met purely and simply through Twitter. I knew he ran in Central Park at a particular time every morning. And I went down there with my digital camera. We met up, took ourselves a selfie before you even had phone cameras, went back to the office, uploaded the picture. We put it on to Twitter and all these other people that we'd never met before and didn't really know, they all started saying, how did you two get to meet? So the next time I was down there, six weeks later, we did a meetup and we had 30 people show up at a, a run and a, a little coffee stop. So from there, it just made pure sense to me that social media was going to be something that was going to take things to a different level within communities and with how people communicated over time. And obviously the marketing implications for all that led me to just do so much more work. I was in recruitment. I was running a professional services, global recruitment function at that point, then proceeded to work in law firms, consulting to my own clients for a period of time. But I've always used social media to do the majority of my marketing. And I have to say, I would say a good 60 to 70% of every piece of business I've ever got from my self-employed career has come through proactive social media marketing. Um, I'm very proud of what I do. I'm very proud of what our team achieves. We've got a team of five now and we're growing pretty consistently. Our focus is on social media outsource content production for professional services firms. And we take care of every step from the strategy implementation all the way through to content creation. But the point of this is to get you in a position where you're ready to go and get things done. So I want to start with two really specific points that should reinforce to you the importance of where we are today. Now, the world, as, as we're all living in it, is contactless right now and it's going to be that way for quite some time i don't think we're going to be seeing people getting on planes doing international travel for quite some time okay that that may not be the case but i think people are starting to realize that at least for the next three months or so that could be the way that things are have a think about while i'm talking through all this what it means for your business a contactless world what what are you going to do with your clients and how are you going to grow that business for your clients when you think about what it means to be in this contactless situation? And what can social media do for you that, that traditional marketing methods and techniques may, may not be able to help with? The second point is social media is really here to stay. And I, I think it's a huge part of this new reality that we face right now is seeing it more of an opportunity rather than a pain in the bum and something that I've got to do. Oh, I've got to get online. I hate being online. It doesn't work for me. I think social media is still a great opportunity for people that may not have made big, massive profiles, got hundreds of followers for themselves right now. But I think you can make a great job of it by starting now, as long as you use it wisely. As long as you just don't jump straight into sales mode, you're not pushing things at people from the word go. You actually try and add value to communities. And I'll show you how we, how we can do that through the rest of this presentation. So having that mindset when we get into this would be quite useful for you. So without further ado, let's get into the do's. Um, I think I've, I've, got a, I've got a set of notes that I'm happy to send out. So you don't need to take any written notes unless you really want to, because I'm going to send you this, this document that has the whole profile in it. And Terry and, and Christine will, will send that out to everybody. But these points, when we're talking about do's, they might seem quite simplistic, but I want to explain to you how they really affect your profiles and the responses that you get when it comes to your social media activity. So when it comes to your contact details, have you ever been in this situation where you, you find somebody that you like to, you'd like to communicate with? It might be somebody that you want to contact about your business. It might be to just give them a call. It's a contact that you have. When you land onto their profile, even on somewhere like LinkedIn, and you just cannot find an email address or a phone number, 
or you might find that email address or phone number or even their website and it's just not spelled correctly, then there may be some error in it that stops you from getting through. I think it's critical for at a time like this to, to make it as easy as you possibly can for people to get in touch with you. Add your telephone number or your email address to the, one of the banners and the headlines if you want. There are lots of ways that you can do that. I'm going to try and flip into my, my profiles here so we can start you off and give you some advice and information if you don't know how that's done. So this is my LinkedIn profile. That This is the version that I see. This little pencil down here lets you edit things within your profile. So it allows you to change this image here, change all your logos, change your, your photos and everything. If you click on contact information and then click that pencil, you can make all the changes that you need. So you've got the ability to put various web links in there. You've got the ability to put your telephone number in there. You've got the ability to connect some of your other social media profiles in there. And obviously, in keeping those up to date, and making them sure they're correct is really, really important thing to do from the outset. So it, it is literally a five minute job to do that. Go in now, um, maybe not while I'm still speaking, but go back in and check that information to make sure that yours is correct. Now, don't post and disappear. But those who engage with your posts are potential customers. And there's something quite uh, frustrating when I go onto a piece of content from an organization, especially from an organization. I think it's a wonderful uh, piece of writing. It might be a great article. It might be something that I want to share with my audience because there's huge value in it. But what I then do is I think up this fabulous comment and I leave it on the post and I then don't get any response or reply or even a little like, even a little press of the button to say thank you for that, for that comment. And, and what that does is that screams to me as the person that's trying to support that piece of content that the people on the other end don't really, don't really care about what they receive and they're not engaged in the community. I think when you see comments, when you see posts that get lots of likes and lots of attention, there's two things at play here. What it does, it shows people are really interested in what you're doing. And a, and a like or a comment on a post is, is a really good indicator that these are people are hugely interested in what you're doing. So responding and replying to them makes a lot of sense, especially at a time like now when people are spending much more time online. The other thing is that as a, as a business, if you jump in and you actually reply to comments and people can feel that behind your brand name, especially, that there are some human in interactions in there, that you can very quickly start to build more of rapport with your potential clients. And there's enormous value in that over time as well. I think if it's, it shows your audience that you really are listening to them and it shows how much you appreciate them. And I think there's a lot to be said for these kind of non-tangible things around appreciation, around, around positive comments, around support when it comes to a time like this where everybody's looking for people that can help them. People are looking for as much help as they can get. And by showing up online and dropping comments and sharing useful and helpful information with people that you are connected to in your network. It's a great way of supplementing that, sit down and have a coffee and tell somebody about everything that you saw when you saw something online. You can share things through this world and these tools that we have now. Okay, next one is don't leave your profiles incomplete. Now, it sends a really similar message to somebody if you land on somebody's company profile, and this happens a great deal on Facebook, if it's very similar to going into an office that's kind of been half painted, it, it gives you that feeling that there's, that there's nothing really going on there yet. Are they actually open for business? Are they going to be responsive and are they going to listen when I've got something to say? When I'm talking about incomplete profiles, we're going to switch out. I'm just going to show you one of my profiles here. Take that one off. So this is, this is our fit for social business profile. 
The key is to look at this about section and actually make sure that you populate this with as much information as you can. Now, hopefully Facebook will come around. Yes, you know, we've got information about us. Our opening hours is a really important one that we keep really up to date. We put as much detail into this one as possible, but this one here is a really important one, but a lot of people forget. And it's the ability to put your story in there, explain more about your business and why we are the right people to solve your problem, Mr. Client. This is what we do to help you. The simplicity of filling in these profiles and just keeping this information up to date can, can really take you to a different place. I think, I think people are, are, are really coming to a profile for a business because they want them, they want to get their help. They're trying to test out and see whether you're really the people that they think they are. You may have had a recommendation to go and look at a firm, a different organization, and you jump into somebody's page. If you land on that page and it doesn't have much love, it hasn't had many posts going through it lately, there's not much information about services. There isn't much of a thriving community on there. They don't post every day, but they, they maybe make interesting video content. There might be things to hold people on the page recommendations and reviews. These are other things that people can get so much value from when landing on a page. But the point here to make is that if people have taken that trip to your page, there's a really strong chance that the next step will be to contact you as long as they see what they want there. So again, it can be as quick as 15, 20 minutes, just jumping back into a profile and just making sure you've got all the information in the right place. That, that has huge value today. Now, while, while we're on the topic of Facebook, I, I, I get so much hate thrown at me when I talk about Facebook. It's incredible. It's people's favorite um, thing to, to bag and, and, and say negative things about. And it has its problems. Don't get me wrong. It struggles with all of the privacy issues. They, it's led by somebody that's turning into more of a dictator every time we read the news. Um, the, the way that it's been taken over by the political institutions and all that good stuff that we know about and we read about all the time makes it highly problematic. But the, I, I think because it's not the most loved platform, the one thing that people forget is that it has huge scale and its size and its impact because of that scale is something that you as a small to medium sized business or an independent business or a consultancy or a small firm or even a bigger firm, bigger firms, the impact they can make with this tool is enormous. But smaller firms, I, I really think that your audience is there. Your audience for your services is in that profile. If not every day, it's there very frequently. 60% of the Australian population is a frequent user. And frequent in the data that I look at is somebody that uses it at least three times per week. So they've actually logged in and they're looking at the profile at least three times a week. Now, it tends to be a bit of a fallback platform for people when they've looked at Instagram for too long and they might not be a Twitter user. They tend to just jump back into Facebook. Facebook's very good at sending you millions of notifications to get you to come and look at things that are going on in your profile. So I, I stress and urge you not to cross a line through it just because you don't like it. It may be something that you as a marketer just don't like, but you have to remember that you are not the customer and the customer loves it. They love everything about it, to, the way that it works for them. In many cases, its advertising products work supremely well in terms of what digital advertising is out there right now. It rarely has technical issues. LinkedIn, anybody that's used LinkedIn for a long time, we will see how far behind LinkedIn's actual technology is than Facebook's. Facebook's products are changing month on month. They've delivered something new today that's come onto my platform around group messaging through Facebook Messenger. So they're trying to do a Zoom kind of equivalent on there now for families and friends, which will be exceptionally popular. And I think there is a, not being there as a small to medium sized business or an independent business or a local business is a hugely missed opportunity. I think if you show up there consistently and you create really good content that's helpful for your audience and 
it's 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 a it's an effort that's worth taking. I also feel strongly that the 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 boost that you get from a higher Google search ranking by having a Facebook page, Facebook pages naturally because of the scale of the thing, the amount of traffic that there is through Facebook, they get higher search rankings from Google. So it's definitely worth putting the time and effort into making something work on there on that platform. Uh, Post as often as possible is the first one. Consistency and brand momentum are what this is all about. It's the name of the game when it comes to social media today. You've got to stay front of mind with your audience. It's extremely competitive out there right now, and everybody's competing for the attention. People have gone from spending three hours, five hours a day online to now 10, 12 hours a day because they're just stuck in front of that screen. And when they get bored, they then start to look at their own profiles and they're seeing more of their own content going through. YouTube got so much traffic the first three weeks of isolation, they had to go from, they had to turn down the quality of their videos generally because it was starting to break the internet. There was so much video content being consumed in that first few weeks. The algorithms that power every platform are really going to support you if you show up frequently and, and you really need this help today. I think that if you post once a week and you wonder why nothing's really happening for you, this is the number one reason is that the algorithms are supporting people who are showing up more and more and more. I can see that question. I'll come back to it um, in, a, in a couple of seconds when I finish this section. Um, you can create a steady path to new business using social media if you show up online in the places where your ideal customer hangs out. So again, this is something to, to change the, the frame a little bit for people. You need to go where your audience is. And your audience in spades, for many people in, in professional services practices, are li on LinkedIn. That's, that's a given. But also there are different types of audiences on Facebook that are looking for information about how to solve problems in exactly the same way, but in, the, in a different type of platform through LinkedIn. So it's worth thinking it through whether your audience is actually there. There are some really good examples of firms using Instagram and getting attention that way for what they do, but it's very different to, um, it's very different to use Instagram to show as a services business how you solve problems, but it's not impossible at all. I think your the recommendation that I have in terms of how much to show up is to be there. I, I try and say to people, be there a minimum of daily. And I'm gonna show you just my profile here. So I've got I've got posts that have come out for the last day after day after day. I've gone three days, another day, or a couple yesterday. And this process of just showing up, you people start to remember your brand. They start to remember your brand images if you include them in the posts. They start to see the stuff that you're sharing. This is a post from, from another organization about something that's really important now, LinkedIn events. Not many people know about LinkedIn events and how they can be utilized. It's something really important to think about. But the more content that comes through these profiles and the more frequent that it is with your brand on it over and over again, it does make a huge impact. And then when people have that problem and they're looking for the solution, the chances are they're going to come and find you. And they're going to come and find the content that you've put out there because that you're the one that they remember that does the thing that they need help with. So I would I would do everything you possibly can to show up as much as possible. And if you're able to post every day or you feel that you've got content that can get out there and solve people's problems, every day would be a really good place to start. Now I'm going to jump back into this question. Let's have a look here. Facebook groups to build community. Yes, it's enormous. It's there, there are two things that Facebook is doing really well right now. It's starting to push people towards a couple of specific things. Because of all the privacy issues, they're trying to usher brands to create groups for people so that they can feel more secure within that gated community. The other thing they're pushing, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, is, is messenger marketing. And that's one-to-one -one messages at scale using messaging apps to communicate with audiences. So yes, 
Facebook groups. They're a lot of work, but you can do a ton of things with them and they're definitely worth, worth considering. Uh, okay, what do you think about doing it yourself in-house versus paying someone to do it for you? It's, it's, it's a chicken and egg situation. It depends whether you want to become a full-time marketer or not. And I think if you, if you do it yourself, especially as a firm or a brand, when you, when, you, when you do it yourself, what happens is that you then become consumed by it and how it works. And for many people that work in, in private practice or are you know, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a trade that takes eight to 10 hours of your day minimum and all of your focus to go with it, becoming a, a marketer to get results these days is really, really tough thing to do because it's extremely competitive and it takes a lot of time. So the clients that come to us what we're doing all the time is doing everything we possibly can to help as, as much as possible to, to ensure that, that their time is spent on the things that make them the most money. Um, what do I think of Google reviews? Yes, fabulous. You need them. They're, they're very, very important today. Uh, the, the, the Google search engine results and actually utilizing the Google profile, the Google My Business profile, to collect reviews, to put information about your firm and to actually post in there is one of the little secrets that gets really good results. Megan, Twitter, I love Twitter. It's where I started. It's something that means more to me than any other social media profile right now. And I'm not talking about it because it's not a big thing in Australia and it's very difficult to drive business from Twitter. There's not many professional services, relationships, that have gone from Twitter to, to actually making huge amounts of money as client relationships. And I'm talking from a brand, but from an individual perspective about growing a community, mass engagement opportunities, the play for Twitter around events is enormous with hashtags. I've got a story about a contact of mine who made contact with somebody before an event by hooking up through the, the hashtag that, that took place around the event. They met at the event face to face. After the event, they kept the conversation going. Later on, they did a book together and made a ton of money out of it. So Twitter it plays a huge part. It's just I haven't put it into this conversation because for many people, it's just not a huge relevancy for right now. Um, impact of the new algorithms. They're changing all the time. It's very hard to stay on top of the new, of the algorithms unless you're a, a marketing professional. Every time something new comes along, I take as much time as I can to get stuck into it and understand it because that's what people are paying us for. They're paying me for that. So everything we do is based upon what the algorithms want. It, you know, I, I, if you can give more information about that question, I'll try and sort of split it down into what algorithm you're talking about because there are algorithms on every single platform. Um, George, LinkedIn showing up every day. Does that have to be novel content posts that could be sharing other people's posts? It's a mixture. I'm going to talk a bit more about that as we go down, but I can pick that one up on next week's Q&A as well. We'll talk about that later. Um, best platform for referrals for legal clients? It's not a simple referral process. If you think that using social media to, is going to get you referrals by just showing up there, you need to do a hell of a lot more than that. And you know, there are, there are lots of ways that you can engage with people to get positive referrals and to get inbound, but this is not an inbound marketing system. Social media is a long tail platform game. You've got to think of it that way. And then Simon, how would you suggest catch a branch to the mighty? Um, I would say that I th that's a long one. I think what we'll do is we'll cut that one and I'll, I'll come back to that one. I'll start with that one at the end because I probably need to, I may cover things in this ending of the conversation that might tick your box there, Simon. So let me just get back to the presentation and then we'll come back to these a little bit later on. Okay, where was I? So um, solving your client's biggest problem and showing how you do that is enormously important. I, I think the type of content that you put out there is, is the thing that makes people stick with you or bounce right off you and never come back. It's very important to ensure that your content 
is serving the needs of the people that, that are, are you looking to attract as clients. So the, the person that's asked the question around how do you get referrals, you get referrals by showing people what you do to solve their biggest problems. And I'm a huge, huge advocate of doing everything you possibly can to show people to the nth degree with, with by exposing as much of your secrets and your as, as many of your secrets and your tricks of the trade as you possibly can for this particular reason that people seem to be very defensive about giving away the, the information that they've spent years learning and uh, competitors are going to steal our best techniques and and actually the, the opposite is quite true I think there's a if you share your secrets and you become known for giving us over indexing on sharing information about you and your brand and how it works, you can be in a great situation. I'm going to tell you a really quick story. Um, a friend of mine ran a, a business in the UK that was an, uh, it was about apps. They developed apps and they came to me while I was recruiting. I was working in a law firm at the time and they said, look, you know, lawyers, I've been given this money by a venture capital firm because I've got to acquire another company. It's a very small technology business. Um, they've given me these five lawyers' names and their LinkedIn profiles. I need to pick one. Can you help me? Because I don't really know what I'm looking for. It's a really techie guy. So we went to LinkedIn. The first profile we looked at was no photo, no public photo. It was their name, their company, and then one line of what they did. And essentially, all we did at that point was just draw a line straight through them. The next two that we looked at had those kind of profile photos where it was uh, a gentleman with his arm half round um, what may have been his partner, and they were kind of cut off. And he'd, written, he'd made a little bit of an effort to say a little bit more about what he did, but it was more about the awards that he'd won and how great he was, rather than actually how he solved that client problem. So we kind of were on the fence about these two. And then we came to the last two. Now, the, the, the one that we got down to two, so we essentially got rid of those other three. The two that we got down to, it was between a relatively young man and a relatively young woman. And it was the only woman that was in the game at this point with five people. Now, we liked the fact that they both had really nicely written profiles. We liked the fact that there was information about their firm and what they did to help us needing an M&A technology problem solved pretty rapidly. But the thing that made the difference and the reason that we gave the work to the female uh, lawyer was that what she'd done is she'd written a series of posts about how to solve my problem as a technology person building an app and trying to acquire other services. So there was a stream of content throughout her feed that solved every single problem that we had. Now, we were never going to do that work ourselves. So what my friend did is he told his venture capital guys to acquire the services of this person. I think they made £300,000 in six months from advising on that deal. So there is a huge payoff from solving these problems at scale for the people that, that, you, that you serve. And the, the photos of awards that you've won the people from your team on podiums and delivering webinars, that's all really nice stuff. And it's part of the content mix that you should put out there. But that's really the cream on top of the cake that, that, that's really the content that you're putting out there that solves this problem for people. Because they've got big problems and bad problems and you've got to be right in there demonstrating that this is your bread and butter, this is what you do. Okay, play the long game. So the return on investment, it's not always visible in set time periods. And this is something that's one of the first questions people ask to me when we sit down to talk about working together. How quickly is this gonna work? How quickly am I gonna get inbound leads? How many inbound leads am I gonna get in the first six weeks, eight weeks, months, whatever? Um, and I, I try and show people that there's much more to it today. It's about a wider set of strategies and making them all work and come together to then have the results that you want. And it's not just press the button on content and things will happen. I think, I think the majority of people can see that, that being the case today. So listen to this, this sentence. It's more about engagement with potential customers one-to-one -one and that working well once trust is built 
and the rewards for this are huge if you can stick with it for long time periods. So I'm going to say that again, engagement with potential customers one-to-one -one works well. Once trust is built and the rewards for this are huge if you can stick at it for long time periods. So I'm going to break that down. First one is engagement. And that's the next thing we're going to talk about. One-to-one. -one. So this goes back to what I said about messaging apps. Now, everybody, when they get a ding on their phone, normally, if they're not engrossed in the one thing that they're doing, that's enough to take them off and then for them to actually look at their phone. So we do a lot of work with um, Facebook Messenger marketing, which is all about messaging apps and one-to-one -one messages at scale. And we can get open rates of open rates around 80% and click-through rates of around 40% which is what happened in when email first started. And it's because everybody is now using messaging apps at scale. So it's a great way to get this one-to-one -one communication going. And that is the way that all marketing online is going over time. Now, trust comes from relationships that deliver high value over time. And if I've worked with you as a client of yours for three, five, seven years, and you've done amazing work for me, that's fabulous. Now, the same thing applies online. If I've been following you for two, three, five, seven years, there are people now, probably a couple of people on this call who have, have followed what I've said and done for quite some time. And they're seeing now that it's working for them. This is how things are. It's, it's important that after, over time, this trust develops and you can create that trust through putting good content out over time. And the long time periods, this is the punch in the face for many people, sadly, it takes massive time and effort. And if you miss out any piece in this jigsaw, this social media jigsaw that I talk about, and the clock will just keep ticking, you've got to stick at it, you've got to keep at it, you've got to test and track your progress as often as you can. And then the data that you get back from the effort that you put in will start to show you what's working and what's not. Now, again, for for people that are engrossed in a career de developing their skills in, in law or consultancy or whatever area you're in, as a marketer today, our job is as much about interpreting data and understanding the flow of data and that, how to react against that data as it is about creating beautiful content that works for our clients. So this is a very, very sticky area, but it's an important one to understand. It takes a long time to make this work. You have to track data to understand where everything is going. We're getting through this now. Engagement, the big one. For me, as far as I, I can say, in terms of everything that I talk about today, if you take one thing away from this, this call, I hope you take much more. It's really about engagement at scale on posts. I'm going to show you a post I put out. Uh, I think it was two days ago. Where are we? Uh, here. So this was a really simple post. It was, uh, it was about if I was starting out on LinkedIn and wanted to build a more effective profile, I would do the following. It literally took me less than three minutes to write that post because this is my skill area and I was just telling people what I would, what I would tell them. I popped it out there, I put a couple of hashtags on it, and I asked people what else would they recommend. Now I haven't got a huge audience and I'm not, I'm not fussed about numbers. Numbers don't necessarily always tell the story uh, when it comes to particular posts. It's more long time numbers over, over scale that matter more. It's trends over time that matter more to me. But again, that post got some really nice engagements, two or three with a couple of people I, I don't know very well, but said some nice things my friend said something good about me there. It just, it, it, it's how you create content and then what happens with that content when you put it out there that leads to great engagement that makes a big difference. The engagement is the thing that makes social media work so well. I say this quite often, but social media is a mirror of human behavior. It, it's essentially interacting as we are as humans and doing that through the means that we have available to us through this technology. That is what social media marketing is all around, all about. I think it's about being a valuable part of your network in the same way that you would for those who you're connected to offline. So you're, if you could connect with your online community in the same way that you would the community that you have face-to-face, -face, you're going to go a long way to actually getting better results out of it. And it's the thing that's always been the case since day one in terms of how social media has worked for those that have made it work the best. 
I think rarely do buyers of professional services make the purchase online. It's, it's not like buying a pair of shoes where you can swipe down on Instagram and, and before you know it, you're in their shop and you can hit a button, hit your size and the product will come to you in, in a two days or a week or whatever. That e-commerce machine does work very well, but it works differently for services. But it's still about catching the attention of people at the time when they're looking for some help and some services. And you do that through a number of things, but it starts with showing up. You've got to show up online. You've got to post content that's interesting to people when they land on your profile. And you've got to then jump onto other people's profiles and like posts and comment with interesting contextual comments on, on what they say. You've got to add some knowledge and some, some information that might be helpful for the people that are following that feed. You've got to be able to share content with your audience and your community that might even come out from a competitor but you've got to rise above that kind of competitive instinct. And if you think it's helpful, share it because people will remember you as the person that shared it as much as they will from the content coming from somebody else. You've got to create your content. I've got a little, little um, uh, I use a little, a little phrase in here called MIDI. You've got to make your content have these four characteristics. It's got to be memorable. It's got to be informative. It's got to be distinctive and it's got to be interesting. And if you if your content ticks those four boxes, however simplistically you might be able to do that, you're going to be pointing in the right direction and good things are going to happen for you. And from that, you'll then start to build momentum. The algorithms love it when you get lots of engagement on your post. They start to show your content to more people and good things start to happen. So that, that is essentially a really good thing to do is to use engagement as much as you possibly can. And so we're coming to the end, hang in there now, learn how to use the tools effectively. Now education builds confidence and it overcomes fear. I, I, I have, as I said at the start, I spent the first year with a Blackberry and trying to work out how to get Twitter as an app on it and all sorts of nonsense. And, and it's just lack of knowledge of understanding what to do. I was breaking stuff. You know, you're worried about breaking things. You're working out how to do video content. You're working out how to do all these different things to, to, to get the best effect from the work and effort that you're putting in when it comes to creating content. Really, a bit of fear from that can be lost very quickly by taking some help and just stepping back and looking what kind of education is out there. It's, it's all, if it's all new to you and this is something, this is all going straight over the top of your head and you're frightened to death about what, what this means for you when it comes to marketing, you've got a lot of fear inside you. Some time spent just learning and understanding what you can even do with your smartphone today can have a huge impact for you. Smartphones today are probably used, most people probably use maximum 70% of the technology that's on their phones. You know, how many people are doing 60 frames a second, 4K video? And uh, like, it's, it's just not something that people do. But and, and people, people's understanding of how to get the best from these devices, just as that as an example, is, 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 is just not happening for people. Now, if you can get beyond even 50% of the capability of your device and learn how to do audio recording so you could start to create a podcast, and how to use an app to do that so you don't even know, need to do any editing. Or if you understand how to position yourself and your camera so that you've got the light in the right place, not that mine necessarily is today, but you've got these problems solved and you know how to use your, your technology, it can really help you to get better results. And I think there are so many people that have got such great things to say about their their, their um about the, the careers that they have, the experience that they have, the skills that they have. There are testimonials to be told of where they've solved, they've had life-changing experiences where they've given people strength that they didn't know they had. They've solved these massive problems for people. That if they just grasped the technology a tiny bit and just pulled them, clawed themselves up, they'd be in a great spot and it would help them to be more effective and to get a bigger audience that could lead to, to, to help them to grow their business. I'm going to jump back into questions quickly. I think, see, there's some more in there. Let's go back to Simon's. I think we're okay for time. Yeah, yeah, we've got about 10 minutes. 
How would you suggest a good way to capture your brand to ensure that your marketing team is telling the brand and your personality? Again, it, it depends on the brand and who you're trying to reach out to. I'll give an example. If I was running a local law firm in a in a in a tight, fairly tight but competitive geographical area, I'd feature video content that captured as much of the um, the the main players in the firm as possible, talking about how they work with their clients. That then allows personality to come across. And it also helps people at the other end, potential clients, to see not only that there are real people behind the brand, but through video content, you've got a chance to maybe sit with clients and talk through their experiences. You've also got the opportunity to show how you outreach into the community and engage with other people that may not have just glowing testimonials. There might be other people that you've engaged with and helped. There might be pro bono things that you've done. I think capturing the brand, the essence of a brand through video today is, is imperative. It's a really important thing to do. I hope that, that answers your question, sir. Um, hashtags. On LinkedIn is important as Twitter. Um, yes, they are. On LinkedIn today, engagement through the hashtags is an important thing. LinkedIn editors are using hashtags really specifically to funnel people towards particular pieces of content. I had a question uh, from a friend of mine yesterday that I answered for him, and it, there isn't any specific way of searching for the best ones when it comes to LinkedIn. It's a matter of course, it's a, a kind of work in progress, and you need to test a few different ones out. But get yourself into the head of the ideal client and think about what kind of things they're going to be searching for. So what kind of hashtags are you going to use that, that are going to help them search for something so they click on, for instance, social media, they'll see a lot of my content in there, hopefully. If, if I put hashtags that are relevant to just me and something that I'm talking about that particular day, then it might be quite difficult for people to find me. Alison, for the everyday person, how many hours a week do you recommend they spend on socials to tick the boxes of engagement? I'd say at least an hour a day. I think an hour a day for an individual, it can help you to just be there and be around the conversations that are going on. You're not going to be able to dive into every conversation. But on one particular day, you might spend 30 minutes just answering comments and talking to people within one separate conversation in one post. But that's time well spent because the idea for me, for an individual, I would say that the, the more one-to-one -one conversations you can get into as quickly as possible, the better. And the aim here is to take that conversation offline as quickly as you can. If you can do that at scale and keep that going, you'll find yourself in a really good spot because you'll start to see that you'll make better connections with individuals. You'll make, you'll make firmer connections with people rather than just randomly having a broader bunch of people in there that, that aren't necessarily all listening to what you've got to say. So I hope that answers that one. WordPress, what is it and how is it used? WordPress is a, is a platform that supports, I would say, at least 50% of websites that are out there in the world today. It, it's a, it was a blogging platform to begin with that's morphed into much more now. WordPress is a site, is, a, is, a, is this kind of the structure that you build websites on and it's used for building websites predominantly today and in enabling blogging capability. Sharon, if you want any more information about that, just give me a shout, I'm happy to, happy to help. Um, what were the four points your content must be? Yes, they're memorable is the first one. It's got to stick in people's memories. Informative, it's got to actually inform them on something very specific. You've got to give them some information that they can work with. It's got to be distinctive. It's got to stand out. It's got to stand out from the crowd somehow. You've got to make sure that it's distinctive enough in terms of what, what's in it to make it stand out. And it's got to be interesting. It's got to hold people's interest. That's, that's the main point there. And do you use Reddit or the like across platforms to spread your message? I don't particularly because I tend to spend more time. So Reddit, for, for, for people that don't know, it's more of a kind of bulletin board style messaging 
uh, people share information on platforms like Reddit. And what happens is um, Reddit allows people to just jump into comments and feed them out. And these, these things can have, have a, a really long shelf life. I don't use Reddit necessarily myself to spread messages. I don't see the value in going outside of the platforms that I'm, I'm an expert and I focus on. Um, but I know people that do you Reddit do use Reddit frequently to jump into other conversations and try and have an impact in these conversations in these different sectors. And it can be good if you're in an if you're in a really tight niche area. But I I tend to try and stay in my lane when it comes to the stuff that gets gives value for me over time. And um and yeah, that's that's realistically where everything is. Oh, that's very kind of that lady to say that. Do you think we should all be putting out the same content on all platforms, as well as tailoring to audiences to what applicants are use applications are useful to do this? I'm not a fan of of spraying content the same content across every platform. I actually think it's very destructive for your brand because the people that follow you on different platforms are actually different there for different reasons. And the people that are there for LinkedIn are very much there for the business conversation and the context of that business conversation. But people who are on Facebook are then getting the same post. It's, it's, it's not what they're on Facebook for. It's usually a very different reason that they're there. So it, it does pay off. You can change. You can have the same core content, but in a message delivered in a slightly different way. And that can save you a lot of time if you do it that way. And yes, all the, all the applications that we all know about, there's Buffer, there's Hootsuite. There's there's tons of platforms that are out there that are they're helping to to share um, content. We use a really good one called SmarterQ. And anybody that wants information on that can get that from me. Um, that's that's that one. Um, yeah, great. I think that's it. Fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Really great to see you back in this series again as well. Um, it won't surprise you to know that you will find the Centre for Legal Innovation on social media. Mm -hmm. So please do follow us on LinkedIn, um, Twitter or Facebook um, for updates on sessions like these and many others. Um, we would love to see you there. So with that and right on the hour, I believe, Ian, we're finished perfectly. Well done. Okay, Brilliant timekeeping. Uh, and we'll see hopefully all of you back again in about a week's time. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.